Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is part two of the uh, lathe leveling adjusting feet, and uh, we don't quite get finished this time. It'll be th this one will wind up being three parts. First off, before I, we actually get into working on stuff, uh, again a big thanks to James Dedman for the little uh, uh, oil cups he uh, sent me. They're modified children's paint cups, kind of like this one. Um, I actually wound up using it quite a bit. Uh, just with the mill work and with the lathe and such, what I was uh, what I was doing today. So, again, thanks, Jim. I'll put a link in uh, the description to his channel. Please go check him out. He's he's a really cool guy. So yeah, it's part two of three. Hope you find it interesting. Well, it's been a few days since I've had a chance to get out here, and rather than bore you with another set of operations that was almost exactly like these uh, threaded sleeves. When I made the nuts, I did the same basic thing as far as adjusting for part length, uh, drilling and tapping, uh, that sort of thing. Only difference is they're a half an inch thick, uh, made of inch and a half um, uh, hex bar, and it's got a one inch 14 thread in through just like the other ones. So, I mean, you saw me make the sleeves. These are pretty much the same procedure. The next step is to take these uh, square bars and the threaded sleeves and Basically, I need to fish mouth the end there to let that guy. Ah, I need to fish mouth the end there to let these sit in a little pocket right there to weld them in. Um, I don't have a well. I don't have an annular cutter, which would be the ideal. I uh, don't really want to use a, a hole saw on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something sketchy that uh, some of you may shake your heads at but uh, it's what I have to work with and I'll, I'll give it a try. If it doesn't work then I'll try to find something else. I'll bring you over to the mill and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I've done here is I've set up the bar in the vise uh, sticking out the end here tr just a little bit just to try to keep it as uh, snug as I can and as uh, rigid as, as I can with this machine. I had to set up a work stop over here uh, because I have to leave some space in between the work piece and the work stop uh, because that's where the tool is going to be going. To do that, I have this little block here, which I, sl I can slide in. It's nice and snug, sliding in and out of here. And that's going to locate the end of the workpiece to start with. What I've also done is scratched out on the uh, workpiece here a nice little arc of where we have to go. Uh, that's our, our, our ending point. I don't have a left-turning, three-quarter inch uh, boring bar to use. But what I do have is I have a three-quarter inch end mill with a weld-on shank. And it's got the little flat in there that I could snug against. This tooth is still in decent shape. The other, well, two of the other three are messed up. So it's a, it's a damaged end mill to start with. So what I'm hoping to do is use that like a boring bar. I've used modified end mills as small boring bars before. Here's hoping this will work. So what I've done is bring this up so that it's just about on that line. Bring my work stop forward. There, snug up the work stop. And now, theoretically, I have a I have a spot where, as long as whenever I set up a new bar, I use that uh, block in here, I should have a repeatable with well within the tolerances I need. I should have a repeatable uh, spot to cut to. Okay, well let's see how this works. Whether it works okay or whether we have an earth shattering kaboom. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be using my new paint or well oil cup made from a paint cup thanks thanks Jim in case I know would be seen Jim Dedman makes these things out of uh, children's paint cups and very nice of him he sent me one so let's see how this goes all right I don't really want to swing it much faster because I don't really trust that it's not gonna act up on me Let's bring it over to touch off. Okay, touched off. I know boring heads aren't really designed for this sort of thing. Took a 20th thou depth of cut. 
them spinning the head fairly slowly simply because of the fact that I don't want to uh, yeah, I don't want to shake the machine too much all right there's 20 thou And I can feed it down. The end mill is just just long enough to clear the whole thing. There we are. One uh, one nice fish mouth. Take my little sleeve, stick it on there, weld it in place, we're good to go. One little quick side note here. I didn't like when it was sitting there, the more I thought about it, I didn't like the way it fit in the uh, fish mouth that was there as far as the, the arc. Um, so I have since readjusted the table and readjusted the uh, cutter itself for its radius of cut. And that's a, that's a much nicer fit. So some of you may have noticed before on the video how there was a bit of a gap back here. I didn't like that, so I readjusted it. Now it's a much better fit. Now I'll get around to doing the other seven, and I'll bring you back after that. So each one of the leg jack screws is going to be just shy of four inches from uh, one end to the other it finished. So we're going to leave a little bit extra. So I just, I've already set up here where, I don't know if you can see it from there, but we're at four and an eighth. Uh, we'll go with that. like that. So seven more of those and then we're back to the lathe. So the next step is to take our eight jack screws. Uh, these are just basically chunks of the ready rod or all thread or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to face the one end and then cut a journal back a uh, half an inch long that is 866 thousandths across. Reason being if you want a uh, if you want a hex that's 0 0.750 of whatever unit you're using you need 0.866 across the across the points if you want 0.750 across the flats. We're going to clean up the one end on each of them first, then we'll cut them to length and form the uh, the bottom portion later. So that's going to be the top of our jack screw. Now we'll bring the indicator over. And I'm going to make it read one inch on this indicator. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, carving away the threads. And as I move this way, uh, once this dial indicator says a half an inch, that's where we need to be. I don't know if you can see that there. 865 and a half, 866. Well, with how accurate these things are anyway, which will be plenty close enough. It's not super critical that this, uh, that I don't have to take the chamfer off or anything because 
This is going to get um, put in the mill anyway and a hex cut into this. So anyway, I'm going to do the next seven and I'll bring you back in at that point. Overall length needs to be three inch 950. I got a plus or minus 20 thou uh, tolerance. So what I'm going to do is each one, like that one there says four inch 157. So each one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the number on the bottom here. Uh, that way I can chuck it up and then just, you know, carve it to length. I can take whatever number here it is and subtract the three inch 950 and get, you know, pretty close to length. Once I do that, then I can start forming the uh, features on this end to hold the photon. <coughs> okay, so we have the first uh, one in here to work, do the features on the end. Uh, it's 4 inch 151 long, so it means we have to take approximately 200 thousandths, you know, 201, 200, somewhere in that neighborhood. Is we'll just get touched off in the, around the middle, which is where I took the measurements. Close to the middle. Get there. Set the dial here at one inch again. There we go. Now I'm going to take this and bring it back into the one inch mark. Because now what we need to do is uh, cut this portion here down to 850 thousandths. It, yeah. We need to cut it down to 850 thousandths and go that way by 450 thousandths, inward. There you go, 851. Yeah, 851, close enough. Close enough. Thankfully, the uh, radius that needs to be put on the end here isn't super, super critical. So, we're going to file it in. needs to be reasonably round. There. That should be it. I don't know if you can see that there. It says, well, Anywhere from 696, 697, which is within a few thousandths, which is pretty much what we need. This little feature on the bottom here is what's going to help retain the, uh, the foot onto the bottom of the jack screw. Well, little man's down for a nap this afternoon, and he doesn't always take afternoon naps, so I'm going to take the time that I can. I call it a bonus. Um, here we are after a little bit of quality time with the bandsaw last night and a little bit of cleanup work today. Uh, Part of it was to get the dirt and crud off of the outsides of some of these, uh, some of these rounds. And uh, dirt and rust, I guess. So yeah, now it's just time to uh, go on to the lathe and start cutting feet. And hopefully little man stays asleep for at least a little while yet. I mean, be nice to at least get an hour. We'll see. Take a little chamfer. That cleans up that edge. So I'm going to do this seven more times and I'll bring you back in. Now I'm going to use this piece of bar here as a spacer. Again, this will be within enough tolerance for the purposes it needs to accomplish. I need to be able to get to within a quarter inch of this end by the time I'm done because I'm going to be cutting a taper on it. Now because of that, I'm going to make sure the jaws are nice and tight and uh, now we can face this end to make it a total of, let's see where we're at here. We are 1 inch 706. We need to make it an inch and a half tall. So 
we're gonna I'm gonna have to take a fair amount of I'm gonna face this down the length and we'll go from there so we're let's see one inch 709 we need to bring it down to one inch fifth or five <laughs> try that again one inch 708 one inch 698 one inch 710 okay I have to bring this down to an inch and a half and so for that what I'm going to do is I'll uh, I'll just do a number of facing passes and uh, we'll face it down to the full thickness So I just did one quick uh, face to clean it up. We have one inch 685. We need to bring it down to one inch or an inch and a half. should be pretty close to inch and a half like say within a thousandth close enough the next step is to center drill and then pilot drill it and pilot drill that about three quarters of an inch deep well I'm gonna try something here just because of the fact that uh, you know it's kind of against my better judgment, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to try just taking it right from the pilot of 3 16ths up to 7 8 I'll go slowly, and uh, hopefully, again, sometimes I'm worried about uh, excess tool pressure on this thing. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Thanks again, Jim, for the oil pot. That's about 350. We'll bring the dial indicator back in. We'll make it say 1.250 on the dial indicator. There we go. And we'll face this part. Now I'm going to leave that center portion fairly thick and then take a measurement afterward. Oh, <laughs> helps if you put her back in high speed. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I left five thousandths worth of extra material on this face, and now I can measure that outer journal. One inch, one thirty-four, one inch, one thirty-five. So we need to take one hundred thirty-five thousandths off. Close enough. Now one handy thing about having a D14 uh, chuck mount, it's not threaded, is that I can spin the lathe in reverse. So I've just reset the compound to 45 and we start cutting our 45 degree taper on the back. I'm going to have to keep an eye out to make sure I still have clearance to the jaws, but I'm pretty sure I will. Okay, try the other way. Hopefully we don't have an earth shattering kaboom. Anyway, you get the basic idea. This is going to take a number of passes. I'll bring you back in a little bit. Well, I've decided to make a uh, running design change here. Uh, you know, seeing as uh, if there's a problem, I'll take it up with my own engineering department and cuss myself out. Um, originally, I was hoping to take this uh, chamfer right up to the base of this uh, shoulder here and then take it out to a quarter inch from the uh, um, 
quarter inch from the base here and then so that you have a quarter inch uh, straight journal and then 45 degrees up into the base of that really for a couple reasons one I'm not entirely sure it, about safety about getting close to the jaws and number two it's really aesthetics it's nothing functional that way I'm just going to take it down to the point where this journal here if this this flat not journal but this flat face here is two inches across which means that right now we're about 2 inch 220. I'm just going to keep cutting away at it until we're about 2 inches on there and then we'll call that good. I think it'll be safer that way. Yeah, good enough. Within 3 thou. And that's just eyeballing it, so that's about as good as she's going to get. So yeah, again, this is part two of three. Didn't figure we'd be able to get it done in two parts, so uh, we'll uh, be welding and assembling next time. So anyway, uh, just want to say thanks to everybody who sticks around, uh, anybody who's interested and comes by the channel. Uh, thanks to everybody who subscribes, gives me comments, you know, little thumbs ups and likes and stuff. So just want to let you know, I do appreciate it. It's been really cool getting to meet a lot of you, you know, through the internet here and through YouTube. So uh, it's really neat to meet like-minded people. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you next time. It's way too late. I got to go to bed. <laughs>